Good morning, it's quite early, which means I'm going to another country. I'm heading to Stockholm, Sweden. It's going to be my first time in Sweden and I'm very excited to see it. Next time I should plan less packed travels though. Too quickly changing the countries is not great. Barely sleep a few hours today and almost overslept our flight. We are in Stockholm now. First tip, when you going from the airport, there are advertising of super duper fast train everywhere in the airport, which goes for 10 minutes to the city, but it's quite an expensive train, 30 euros per person. If you're two people, uh, you can basically take a taxi for this kind of money. You should walk a little bit further and you'll see the buses there. They took us just 40 minutes to get to the city center from the airport and they cost just 11 euros. We checked in to Best Western. It's a chain hotel, it's pretty good but usually quite expensive but here in Stockholm it was one of the cheapest options in the city. I noticed that in expensive countries staying in a hotel as expensive or as cheap as staying in an Airbnb. Probably because of different regulations for short-term rent. They even allowed us to check in in 8 a.m. I think they even upgraded our room because it's different from pictures on booking.com. This one seems more spacious and looks nice, furnished a bit in the style of 70s but overall it's a great experience with Hotel. They told us about a cool cafe, it's called Whiskers. You can see it even through the glass, it's a cat cafe. Unfortunately, we decided to skip it because you have to pay for one hour minimum and I have allergy for cats, so I'll be constantly sneezing there after 20 minutes. But it's a cool place to eat. One of my favorite kind of fast food eat is IKEA meatballs, the vegan ones. Since we are in Sweden, we have to try the meatballs. I found some place that's called Mom's Kitchen and it was recommended for meatball. Unfortunately, this place doesn't have meatballs. Well, it has, but they're with meat. So if you eat meat, you can try them here. Overall, it's quite a cozy place. Tiny restaurant with a home cooked food. We ordered cantaloni. It's some kind of mix of pasta and lasagna. Pretty tasty. Inside these cantalonis there is some kind of cheese and you get uh, lasagna mix on top and some oil. Very good, very homemade. After mom's kitchen we didn't feel full because we ordered just one dish. But across the street they have a cool hot dog place called Bruno's Corv Bar. They have a few vegan options, vegan sausages this is one of it. It's quite tasty and spicy. <laughs> We are currently walking around an area called Normalm. They said this area was quite sketchy back in the day. Later they completely rebuilt it and now it's one of the fanciest areas in Stockholm. It's kind of shopping districts but we haven't reached all the stores yet. And it's a beautiful area. Everything is so clean and tidy. Amazing. Amazing so far in Stockholm in general. Now we reached one of the oldest streets, if not the oldest in this area. It's called Strandwagen. I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly. We're exploring these two areas basically today. First, we're, I've been at first, Normalm, and second is Ostermalm Strong. It's two areas close to each other and they're sharing a similar history. Both were run down areas and considered underclass, lived there. They both were changed and fully rebuilt. This street was destroyed back in the 19th century and was restored. Now it's an exclusive and posh area of Stockholm. It's expensive residential buildings, as I understand. And on this side, we see yachts. There are many ports and many, many yachts are here. There you can see an old town. Let me try it, focus properly. Here you see an old town. These spires are on the top of the building, are quite famous. If you just Google Stockholm, uh, you immediately recognize these spires on the castle, on all the photos. It's quite cozy here in this area, but you can feel it's a posh area. I think we got lucky that we arrived in autumn. The city is full of yellow, green, reddish colors on the trees and it's very charming. The downside 
side is that Stockholm is not very warm so it's already 10 degrees Celsius right now and kinda cold. Cool landmark. It shows the cleaning water levels. These progress bars show how many micro elements were processed before and after another one for air cleaning. It's interesting and a bit strange to me on how to alcohol is sold here in Sweden. You can drink alcohol in bars without any issues until 1 am, but in the stores you can only buy drinks that have 3 and 5 or lower of alcohol. But I checked and mostly no alcoholic beers in there. For any other drinks you have to go to special stores that called System Balaget. These stores are fully controlled by government and they work only until 7 pm. This is how alcohol stores looks inside. I wouldn't say there are many people here considering it's Friday night and store closes in 20 minutes. Frankly it looks like duty free shops. Last point for today is this street. It's called Normal Strong. This street is interesting for the birth of Stockholm syndrome. Just in case you didn't know it's a condition where the victim of the attack or hostage develop a sympathy and bond with the attacker or captor if they spend some time with them. The condition first known time happened here. There was bank robbery on the street and upon release the hostages were sympathizing to the criminals they wanted to help them or something like this it was called normal strong syndrome at first and then it was renamed to stockholm syndrome we were walking around in the evening and noticed a strange thing here the whole street is full of vintage cars here some old camaro on the other side there is vintage chrysler i don't know what's happening maybe some car festival if you know what it is please let me know in the comments I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement, the top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, give me that crown Get in my way and you'll be put down It ain't your place, all this my town If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit, a stupid myth, you choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Good morning, it's our second day in Stockholm and today is the main goal to travel around Stockholm subway and check the beautiful stations out. <laughs> First station we visited called Solna Centrum and it's my favorite one. Its art has green and red as the main colors. It was built in the 70s when deforestation was quite a hot topic in Sweden, hence the art, the forests and setting sun behind them in the sunset. The station really does look fantastic and the escalator going deep into the red cave is probably one of the most photogenic places I've seen. If you only have time for one station in Stockholm, I highly recommend choosing Solna Centrum. This station is called Akala. It is decorated in one ochre color. As far as I understand, it symbolizes the life people. The station is also beautiful, but not as much compared to the other station. Maybe because the color is not as epic. The next station is called Rathuset after the town hall which is located on the surface. Even though it's only one color here, it's also a spectacular station. The dark colors make everything more dramatic and the main color here is dark red, even closer to brown. The art on this station shows the history of Kungs an island and one of the Stockholm neighborhoods. This station is more colorful. It's just called Stadium Station because the Olympic Stadium is nearby. This station was one of the first cave stations in Stockholm. In the beginning there were many fears that people would be uncomfortable or they would associate the underground with some evil world. That's why the station was decorated in such a bright and cheerful colors. So people were more happy going to work. The other magical station called Tietzentralen and it's the very first station in Stockholm to have art. It was built and opened to public in 1957 but the trains only started running in 1975 when the subway line was completed. It's one of the central transfer stations quite busy in rush hour so they made an art in a calming and relaxing style. And it does create a meditative effect I would say. Great idea. 
And the last station is called Kunstrad Garden, and it's probably the strangest station we visited. It's named after Royal Garden, which is on the surface. They say it's the only station where you could find a real fauna. Even spiders live there. And there was discovery of some fungus with unique DNA structure. Personally, the station reminded me of some kind of wet swamp cave with a lot of installations from different times and styles. I can say the art here is really cozy especially with the green swampy colors but i would say the station is definitely interesting We completed our tour around Stockholm subway. It was a fantastic experience. I recommend everyone to visit it at least a few stations. The only downside is when you're buying a ticket, it's only valid for 75 minutes and we spent around two and a half or even more hours to visit the most popular stations. The ticket you can extend or buy a new one is only possible via application. But if you purchase the ticket via machine, you can't really buy a new one or extend it. So the idea for Stockholm metro company is to introduce some kind of art ticket that's valid for multiple hours. It could be more expensive of course. Apart from that it was such a great experience. You can take stunning photos on most of the stations especially the station with black red cape and escalator going inside. It was amazing. Again we are going to try and find the place with meatballs. I think I found some place with vegan ones. It's called meatballs for people. Okay we are in this place meatball for people and they do have a vegan meatballs but the place is a bit strange i'm not an aggressive vegan or vegetarian or anything like that but everything reminds me of some kind of butchery here they have some meat of rare deers you can notice the deer's horn and hides hanging around feels a bit weird to be honest worth mentioning the place is quite expensive more than 20 euros for meatball dish and 8 euro for a beer 0.3 liters but let's try meatballs i hope they're tasty. We had to try meatballs here in Sweden. It's pretty good. Mashed potatoes are awesome. Meatballs can't put my finger on what are they made from. But if I'm being completely honest, I hope no one will hear me here. I think IKEA has better meatballs. At least uh, the vegan ones. Maybe they specializes in the meat ones. Plus one downside for me, it's not a cranberry sauce, just cranberries. Well, technically it's tasty, but in my opinion IKEA is also tasty. I'm talking about Dutch IKEA. Maybe here they have even better IKEA. If you'll visit this place and try meat meatballs please let me know in the comments how good they are okay we ate meatballs and now it's time for the most touristic part of the city old town or in sweden gamla stan <laughs> We're having a fika in 7-Eleven. Fika is a part of Swedish culture and it's basically a break on the weekdays. I think it's around 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. The break usually contains coffee and some pastry, something like this one. So we also decided to have fika as Swedish people do. We also have a cupcake. Fika and many other concepts are the part of the big thing called Lagos, which is basically determined the balance of work, rest, personal life, family, etc. It's quite popular in other Scandinavian countries as well. I actually think that Dutch, although we don't have any names for it, they take many ideas from Scandinavian countries as well. Life and work-life balance is quite similar and how people behave as well. So it's probably the end of our walk around Old Town on this famous square where these two colored houses located. I don't know, it may be a bad light today, but I honestly thought they will be more colorful in real life, with orange and red being more bright. I but they look beautiful, so tidy, it feels like they've got a lot of maintenance. There is also a Nobel Prize Museum here, it's not where they give the prizes, but uh, just the place where you can learn more about the history of the award and the people who get the prize. That's probably it, the highlight is definitely Stockholm subway, it was fantastic. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and see you in the next one.